Hi, it's the Tax Geek with more oversimplified information about your taxes. Today, I tell the truth about tax brackets. You've heard it before. In fact, you've probably said it yourself. If I make more, it'll just put me in a higher tax bracket. Your tax bracket is also known as your marginal tax rate, which is the rate each additional dollar you have in taxable income will be taxed. So if you're in the 22% tax bracket, for each additional dollar of taxable income, you'll pay 22 cents in additional taxes. But that's different from your effective tax rate, which is your rate of tax considering all your adjustments, deductions, and credits, and taking into account the fact that your marginal rate increases as your taxable income increases. So, is someone in the 22% tax bracket paying 22% tax on all income? Absolutely not. Still, people believe that if they edge into a higher tax bracket, all their income will suddenly be taxed at that rate. Again, not true. So let's take a look at some scenarios and ultimately compare tax bracket or marginal rate with the actual effective rate these taxpayers pay. Meet John and Jan. They are married and have one son, Jim. John has wages of $84,000 and Jan is a stay-at-home mom. Here is the tax bracket table for a couple filing jointly. We'll keep it in the corner for reference. At first glance, you might think that with their income, they're in the 22% tax bracket and would pay 22% of their income in tax. But let's see how it really works. The first $24,800 is their standard deduction and is not taxed at all, yielding a tax of $0, leaving us with $59,200 still to be taxed. The next $19,750 of their income is taxed at the lowest rate of 10%, or $1,975. That gives us $39,450 remaining to be taxed. That entire amount is in the 12% tax bracket, so the tax on that amount is $4,734. Their total tax is $6,709, which when divided by their income gives them an effective tax rate of 7.9%. But we're not done. Jim qualifies John and Jan for a $2,000 child tax credit, bringing their tax down to $4,709. Now their effective rate is just 5.6%. Okay, so Jan wants to work part-time at a job that will pay her $18,000 a year. John worries that it will push them into a higher tax bracket. But let's see the actual effect of the additional income. Their total wages are now $102,000. Again, the first $24,800 is not taxed. The next $19,750 is still taxed at 10%, yielding $1,975 in tax. The next $60,500 is then taxed at 12%, yielding $7,260 in tax. Only the final $6,800 is then taxed at 22% for $1,496 in additional tax. In this case, their total taxes would be $10,731 for a 10.5% effective tax rate. Remember, we still have a $2,000 child tax credit, reducing their tax to $8,731 and their effective rate to 8.5%. So you can see, in this case, even though the tax bracket rate went up by 10%, the effective rate went up by only about 3%. Of course, other factors can affect the effective tax rate, so let's change the story up. Instead of Jane getting a part-time job, she starts a business and her net profit is $18,000. At this point, it gets a bit more complicated. Their $102,000 in gross income would be reduced by two tax breaks given to small businesses. These tax breaks are definitely the subjects of other videos, but suffice it to say that they would total approximately $4,600. Now their first 
$29,600 is not taxed. The next $19,750 is still taxed at 10% or $1,975. And the remaining $52,850 is then taxed at 12% or $6,342. Their total taxes from the table are $8,317 yielding an 8.1% effective tax rate. After the child tax credit, this reduces to $6,317 for a 6.1% effective rate. In this case, we never even reached the 22% tax bracket, but self-employed people are subject to a self-employment tax of 15.3% on net income, which in this case would be $2,543, which is added back into the taxes, resulting in a final tax of $8,860, which when divided by total income of $102,000, yields a final 8.6% effective tax rate. So in conclusion, your tax bracket isn't the effective tax rate you actually pay. Instead, your effective tax rate takes into account different rates of income taxation, credits available to the taxpayer, and any additional taxes that might be owed. As always, there are links in the description for more information. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comment space below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of your taxes oversimplified. Mm -hmm.